Del Marva Coast. Thanks for joining us on this beautiful Wednesday here on Coast Life. We are your hosts. I'm Paige Marley. I'm Leah Rizzo. And yeah, we really only have, what, a week and a half left of August here. Ugh, makes me sick. I know. Summer's going too fast. Fly and by. <laughs> but if you've never joined us before, first of all, welcome. Hi. This is where we pretty much tell you all the cool things to do around coastal Del Marva. Exactly. We have all the coolest places to eat. There's a lot to cover. To We've see. got really cool people to introduce Ooh, you to. Yeah, the people. Yes. yes. There's a lot happening. We're all going to get to all of that. You have, this, you have an hour with us. Yes. But first, we always like to talk about just some, some fun things, what people on social media, in your office are talking about. Yes. yes. And uh, some uh, several of our talkers today have yeah. kind of come from social media. Yes. And uh, one that I've seen, like sort of the, it started in little trickles and then all of a sudden, like now everybody's talking about it, mm -hmm. or at least like that's how my TikTok algorithm is tailored. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but there's a Taylor Swift impersonator. Dun, so dun, she's dun. not technically an impersonator, like by job okay. description. I don't even know if that is technically a job. Like yeah. I feel like some people are like, tribute bands yeah. that fall under the umbrella of impersonator. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I think it depends how much like makeup and costume you put on. Yes. And so she does look like Taylor, but for sure when she does her makeup a certain way, mm. her hair a certain way, mm. her outfits a certain way. And she kind of keeps doing like I, I think the biggest thing on social media, like obviously everybody does things for views, for likes, for comments. That's because it. that's how you get the money. Right. But a lot of times people are looking for, like the audience of social media is looking for authenticity. Yes. So when you're doing something like impersonating a celebrity, they want you to be honest about it, I think. Yes. You know? I think it's weird. It's super, well, for one, it's super it's weird. It's super weird. She's kind of makes me uncomfortable. I've seen her briefly mm -hmm. and she does things that she acts like aren't on purpose, but you can tell they are like, going to a city where Taylor's having a concert yeah. <laughs> and like dressing in like Taylor clothes and doing her makeup like it, that's a little And cheap. hiring security. <laughs> Why did you hire security? That might do it. That, it's, it's, the whole thing's weird to me. And unfortunately, this isn't new. Do you remember the girl, I think her name was Paige, but she- I think you're right. Yeah. Wasn't me, but she would always mimic Ariana Grande. Yes. Ooh, that was, yes. and she would do things like FaceTime people, and she was like, it's a prank. I'm acting like I'm Ariana. I'm like, you're going to get Ari in some trouble. Right, and that's the thing. So, like, do you end up getting the celebrity in legal yeah. trouble if, if you do something sort of in their image? Like, right. obviously not, and I think more than anything else, you just put yourself on the line to get sued. Yeah. But B, like, is there any money in being a celebrity impersonator? Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I why would you do it? I think, it, like you said, like a tribute. If this girl looked like yeah. Taylor Swift and could sing and sang some yeah. T-Swift songs, I'd be about it. Right. Sure. You go to a tribute show right. because, you know, either the, the tickets are a little more affordable yeah. or it's for artists that are no longer with us. They've like passed. that's and, and you never got a chance to see them in their yeah. heyday. So you're like, yeah, let's go to the tribute yeah. show. I think it's weird. I think and there's so much. Just scrolling through my TikTok now, I'm like, please it's drop weird. the app. And I think that's it. And it's the fact that she's like, oh, I don't really look like Taylor Swift. I have brown eyes. She has blue. Goodbye. <laughs> like, oh, Goodbye. great. Okay. I'm bored of you. The red lipstick, the yeah. hair, like everything yeah. in her power doing literally her best Taylor Swift impression. Yeah. Sorry. It's weird. Stop. Be yourself. Yeah. It's yeah. strange. I, just... I get you get attention, but. Right. And it, and I mean, it works. It Bottom does. line is she's getting views. She's getting comments. We're talking about her. We're talking about her. Like, Have we it, said her name? It works. Ashley uh, <laughs> Leeshin, I think, is Something how you like that. say her name. Yeah. Well, yeah. It worked. That's You're on Coast Life. It worked. <laughs> Welcome, Ashley. Hey. <laughs> but stop. But chill so, out. Speaking of social media trends, and this yeah. one was kind of controversial as well. This one had a lot yes. of people that thought it was fun and goofy and harmless. And then you also had a lot of people that were like, mm, something about that doesn't feel quite right. Yeah. And maybe you've done some scrolling through TikTok, and especially if you follow a lot of family accounts um, or content about families, mm -hmm. there's been a prank going around. And I think it's been mostly moms that I've seen more so than dads. Yeah. But it's parents <laughs> like <laughs> asking their kid to bake with them and then taking an egg and cr cracking it on their head, like unexpectedly, like the kid doesn't know what's coming. Yeah. I, okay, so you're going to think I'm a terrible person because when you brought this up, you're like, have you seen the egg cracking trend? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, isn't it funny? <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm like saving these videos on my TikTok. Like, like, I can't wait to bake with my kids and be like, haha, little Timmy, <laughs> joke's on you. And then Leah's like, no, Paige, it's rude. And I'm like, yeah, it's rude. Well, the thing <laughs> is, is it depends. You know, I like think so if too. your kid is a prankster and like usually by a certain age, you'll know if your kid is into right. pranks and like they might think that's funny. But if your kid 
doesn't think that's funny. And then all of a sudden, yeah. you kind of like, now they don't know maybe if they can trust you or they don't want to bake with you anymore because the last time they did, you cracked an egg on their head and they were like, <laughs> the videos are so good. But the ones where they cry, like I always felt like that was sad. Same things when like parents would tell their kids that they ate all their Halloween candy. <laughs> I think that's funny too. Or when they like gift like an avocado and the kid's like, for Christmas, like, thanks. It's yeah. so. I, like, I love it when the kids are sweet and like yeah. you give the kid an avocado and they're like, wow, this is the best yeah. gift ever. But like, I, there is something, and I tend to not really like family content for that reason where too. it feels like you're sort of exploiting your kids a little bit. And I also feel like kids on the internet, it's just, it's a slippery slope, especially yeah. when they don't, like, they don't understand. No, that's for sure. It, it is slippery. The, the one trend that I, so I got on this part of TikTok from watching, though, the first part of this trend I saw was people doing it to their significant others. That's hilarious. Way funnier oh, with two adults. It yeah. really is funnier than the kids. Like, some of the kids' ones are funny. Like you said, if they're, like, maybe seven and older, they understand what's going on, and mm -hmm. they think it's funny. The the significant other one, when the girls do it to their husband, <laughs> and you see... I've seen, yeah, I've oh, seen daughters so do it to good. their dads. Yeah. Like, that's kind of funny, and too. And so many of the husbands, they're, like, like Hulk smash. Like, they get so mad. It's like, for what? It's just a little egg on your forehead. And then the others laugh. So I love this trend. If you've done it, please, I want to see it so bad. Just tag me in it or something. Maybe. Maybe we should do a coast life version. Yeah. <laughs> I see Leah walking in with <laughs> eggs tomorrow. Like, Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, right. Random acts of kindness day. Right. <laughs> oh, hey. Happy random acts of kindness day. Yeah. We haven't celebrated yet. Yeah. Remember our interview yesterday with Ryan Ennis? <laughs> Today's yeah. the day. Happy random acts of kindness. Do something nice. Be kind. Yeah. Like <laughs> smash an egg on your coworker. <laughs> I will not be mad if you do it. All right. Just so you know. There we go. Yep. Uh, one more thing, too, before we jump into yeah. today's show. Uh, there's been an uptick, speaking of, of kids, families, baby names. Yeah. But all these baby names have been after, like, British cities. So, like, Aberdeen, Ooh. Bradford. Some of the, they all sound really ritzy, you know? Fancy. Right? I feel like I've seen an uptick, too. And maybe this has actually always happened. I just am realizing it now. People naming their kids, like, Pippa, Elizabeth, Pippa. Charlotte, after the royal family and their sisters. Isn't yeah. that her name, Pippa? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Apparently, so. that was, like, the number one name in England a couple years ago. There you go. You never know. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, sounds fancy. I, 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 I dig it. Yeah, yeah. I can get into it. Why not? Pretty if cool. you need some baby name ideas, there you go. Check an atlas. Watch <laughs> Coastline. <laughs> Paige and Leah are great names, too. Yeah, Just that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we've got a great show planned for you, as always. We love our friends from Shell Brothers. We're checking out one of their new communities with Cardinal Grove. And you know we love our friends at Preston Automotive. They're always looking for ways to give back to their community, but they also like helping out. Maya is checking in with them later on in the show. All that and more is headed your way with more Coast Life. Coast Life is brought to you by BB Healthcare, Coastal Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning, Preston Automotive Group, and Shell Brothers. You're watching Coast Life, and can you picture yourself living in a beautiful home like this one? If you can, you gotta check out one of the newer Shell Brothers communities called Cardinal Grove. The model home is now open, but of course, we're gonna let our friends from Shell Brothers take it from here. If you live along coastal Delmarva, you're familiar with the numerous Shell Brothers communities that many call home. While you may picture Shell Brothers communities as larger with lots of activity, maybe it's a smaller, quieter life that you're after. Cardinal Grove is a, uh, a small community, 98 total homes. Um, so we consider it a boutique style community. Um, typically with Shell Brothers, you're gonna see bigger communities of 100 plus homes. So this is a unique project for us. Um, and one that we're really excited about. So right up the street from a lot of communities that we know have been popular with us in the past. Um, so we've been looking forward to this one for a long time. If a close-knit neighborly community is what you're looking for, you'll find it in Cardinal Grove. Some of the advantages of living in a small community are, are the fact that you're gonna know a lot of your neighbors. Um, you know, with a smaller community, you're gonna drive by a lot of those folks and, and know a lot of their names. And, and, you know, throughout the process, we'll do a good job of connecting you both on Facebook and at our community happy hours um, to meet a lot of those neighbors. So when there are 250 or 300 homes, it's hard to know somebody who lives in the back of the community, whereas, you know, in a community like this, you're gonna know everybody. Another advantage of choosing Cardinal Grove is choosing a mostly maintenance-free lifestyle. You know, a lot of times we're trying to go ahead and include everything as part of our HOA fee so that it is a maintenance-free community and a fee-simple community um, where everything's taken care of. So your um, lawn is taken care of, fertilization on the lawn is taken care of, 
All the common area lawn and landscape is taken care of in the neighborhood, so everything should be looking top notch right when you pull in. And of course, as you can expect with your home in a Shell Brothers community, there's plenty of desirable amenities at Cardinal Grove. Um, well, we will have a beautiful outdoor pool. We're going to have that right next to a pool house, somewhere you can essentially change store belongings in. Um, we'll also have cabana style lounging, which is going to be super nice. Um, we'll have a grilling area as well, and then we will have a small playground. Um, all in sort of the same area, and then we'll also have Cornhole and Horseshoe. With various price points, there's a home that fits your budget. Um, we're going to have base prices that start in the high 400s. Our two lowest price homes start at 490 and 495. Um, and then everything else is pretty much in that 500 up to the 600 kind of category. Um, so we have a wide range of what we're available to offer in here. Um, you know, we've sold homes under the 600,000 mark, and you know, we've sold homes well over the 800,000 mark. So it's a very wide variety of who's moving into this community. No matter your taste, a variety of floor plans are available to you at Cardinal Grove. We have a little bit of everything for everyone. We have ranch style floor plans. Um, so that'll give you, you know, one story, one level living. Um, you can do two story house. So we have, you know, smaller homes, larger homes. Uh, the nice thing about this community is you can actually do a basement, finished or unfinished on any lot. As they say, location, location, location. And the location at Cardinal Grove is both quiet and convenient. You are right in Lewis. You're really about six and a half miles from downtown, so from the beaches, from shops, from the restaurants. And you're really about, I'd say, eight miles from Rehoboth. So definitely a great area. Um, we've had other communities in this, kind of close to this area. We had Coastal Club, super popular community. It's only about maybe a mile, mile and a half away. The model home at Cardinal Grove is now open, so if you're ready to make Cardinal Grove your home and your community, make sure you book an appointment with our friends at Shell Brothers. We are open here at Cardinal Grove seven days a week. Um, Monday through Saturday, we are open 10 to five, and Sunday's 11 to five. Um, if you wanna sit down with Tara or myself, please schedule an appointment with us, give us a phone call, shoot us an email, text, whatever it is, and we'll get you on the schedule. Um, if not, feel free to drop by, check things out, um, and we can go from there. And Paige, that was just the model home that we were kind of showing oh, off. Isn't it beautiful? Amazing. I mean, we know all those homes are beautiful. Yes. But one thing that I thought was really, really cool, mm -hmm. talking with Tara, she said that they've even been able to put, like, a home theater room in the basement. Okay. The whole theater room. <laughs> like, I wouldn't leave there. Right? <laughs> I would never leave. So uh, make sure if you are interested in those homes, yes. especially because a lot of Shell Brothers communities are, are kind of big. Yeah. That one's a smaller, quieter, more reserved one. So maybe nice. that's more your speed. Make nice. sure you make an appointment just to check it out, you know? And invite us over for movie nights. Exactly. <laughs> Cardinal Grove. Make sure you check that out. That's but don't great. go anywhere because there's more Coast Life for you to check out when we get back. This segment of Coast Life was brought to you by Shell Brothers. You're watching Coast Life, and if you're maybe trying to be a little bit more health conscious, yeah. maybe try to get some great ingredients in your diet, like a lot of fruits, vegetables, yeah. and a lot of stuff that comes from our local farmers, mm -hmm. then you want to check out Jun and Juice. That is where our field correspondent, Maya Henry, is checking out all the delicious menu items in Berlin. Take a look. You're watching Coast Life, and at Coast Life, we love to find ways to make us both happy and healthy. And today we're at June and Juice that can give us healthy alternatives to do just that. And beside me is the girl behind the magic, Miss Megan Hines. How are you, Megan? I'm doing great today. Thank you for being here. No problem. So I'm super excited to be with you to try some of your stuff. Yes. So tell me a little bit about June and Juice and how it came to be. Absolutely. So we are exactly one year old. July of last year is when we opened. Uh, we do a lot in a small space and we make a lot of healthy options. So we make everything from cold pressed juice, smoothies, acai and yogurt bowls, um, popsicles and kombucha. So a little bit of everything, a lot of healthy beverages. Uh, we started when during COVID, we were trying to get our kids to eat vegetables, which is a challenge. Yes. <laughs> um, they just did not want to, to do that. So we were trying to sneak them in and we got them involved in juicing and, and we realized that that balance was really great uh, wow. for us as well. And we wanted to bring that to the Berlin community. So you say you are locally grown. Where do you get your stuff and why do you feel that it's so important to get stuff locally grown instead of, you know, at the regular stores? Absolutely. So we really prioritize 
working with our local farmers, sourcing as much as we can locally. Um, right now that's everything from cucumbers, watermelon, cantaloupe, um, greens, beets, as many vegetables as possible, um, and fruits as well. So we, I think I'm working with about 12 different farmers, um, not all at the same time, but I, I do have a network that we work with. Um, the main reason is because I can call them up, go to their farm, see how they're growing it, and make sure that they have good growing practices that we can bring here because that impacts the quality of our, our things that we're making, our ingredients. Um, so the other reason from a science and sustainability point, okay. it's uh, less transportation, less fossil fuels, and it's grown um, right in our community, which puts the dollars back into our own economy as well. Wow, so we love that. Deep. <laughs> no, that's deep, cool. Deep, but also tastes good. Wonderful. Yeah. So what kind of things do you have? Like you said you have these different types of drinks, acai bowls. What are some of the benefits of having this stuff to be so healthy and have different homegrown things? Yes, yeah, so the, the local aspect is important to us, but also we want to provide the most healthy options as yeah. possible. Um, the juice, for example, our juice is a 12 ounce juice and it's about five to six servings worth of vegetables all in one glass. So you're getting wow. all those nutrients, all those health benefits, um, just very condensed and easy and accessible for people to drink. Um, our smoothies have a lot of good fibers and fruits. Um, they're not made from like smoothie mixes, they're made from, from real fruit. So you get all of those fruit benefits. Um, we have things that work for inflammation like turmeric, um, digestion like yes. ginger or beets, um, things that can help your heart. Um, things that can lower your cholesterol. Just We try to heal uh, with real food and using those nutrients that are in food to have all those health benefits. Yeah. Absolutely love that. Not only does it taste good, but it helps you as well. Exactly. So what are some of the, what are some of the things that people buy the most here? Like is it your drinks, your acai bowls, or a little bit of all? It depends. Um, when it's sunny, we do a lot of smoothies. Like when it's sunny and hot, people are going to the beach, they want a smoothie or maybe an acai bowl. Like, they taste good. Um, I think the the most things that we sell, we sell the most, I guess, of, of juices. Okay. But we have, um, I think that's that's our bread and butter and what we bring to farmers markets and what we really talk about the most. Um, that being said, there's so many different flavors. I think we're rotating right now about 18 different flavors. So oh I don't gosh. have like a best-selling like single one because it changes and it's very seasonal. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And you <laughs> talked about the farmers market. So you connect with like a local farmers market. You connect with what kind of places you connect with? Absolutely. So the Berlin farmers market is actually like right out our door. They close the street down on Sundays, um, May through September, and it's right out here. Uh, we are also attending the Lewis farmers market up in Delaware and the Camden Avenue farmers market in Salisbury. So trying to have a bit of a reach to where we go. All right, that's super exciting. Yeah. And now, are we able to make something, yes. a creation of yours? Yeah, absolutely. So All we're right. going to make some smoothies back here, um, and then we'll make an acai bowl for you as well. All right, I'm ready. All right. Okay. And then that can go in. And this has a little bit of cake. Yeah, a little bit of cake. Pretty spicy. You guys are looking for a healthy alternative to replace your ice cream or any other cravings that you have please come to john and juice in berlin maryland when we come back megan is going to show us one of her acai uh, i say acai but yeah whatever you want to go with acai yeah. bowls yep. there's more coast life on the way you're watching coast life and before the break megan from june and juice showed us some of her delicious smoothies and now we're with Kylie, one of the awesome staff here. So Kylie, what are we making? Uh, we are going to make an, a large acai bowl okay. um, with granola and fresh fruit on top. All right. All right, so first we have our acai base. And we're going to add some local mm. granola on top. Wonderful. And what kind of flavor does the granola have? The um, I think it kind of gives like a, I think they use brown sugar, okay, which gives it like a really, I don't know, like warm flavor. And then let's get our banana. 
And for people that don't know what the, the acai is, what would it taste like if they were trying to order it? Um, I think it kind of tastes like a mix between like a blueberry and an elderberry. It's really creamy, okay. like kind of like ice cream. Ooh. This is our banana. Oh, that's really pretty. And then this order wanted blackberries, so we are using local fresh blackberries on top as well. Wonderful. And is this like a special order, like a special acai bowl? Uh, not really. I think she just wanted to substitute out the blueberries. Okay. And then we top it off. With honey drizzle. Wonderful. And that's it. All right. So what is your favorite part about working at June and Juice? Um, probably learning all the new stuff that I do every day. Yeah. I learn a lot about like the juices and what they're good for. Just things I never even thought of before. Really? So yeah, that's probably my favorite thing about okay. working here. And what is probably your favorite juice? I heard you talking about juices. Um, it's really hard to narrow it down. Probably the sunshine. I really like the, the grapefruit flavor with the ginger. I think it's really good and refreshing. So Does that's it have funny. any special benefits? Um, I know the grapefruit has a lot of vitamin C in it. Okay. It's just really nice to cool off and like, I don't know, really refreshing. So that's really what okay. I like about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. So what's the next step? This is the order. Do you guys have to put like a special top on it? Uh, not unless they request it. Okay. Um, awesome. So we'll, yeah, we'll just bring this out to her. All so, right. Yeah. And for someone who's never heard of June and Juice, what would you tell them about this place to make them to really reel them in? Um, I would say that we do have a lot of different options. If you're looking for something more filling or just something to either cool off, um, you know, something to sip on or for more meal-like, like a bowl here. Okay. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of different flavor options and it's just a lot of variety to pick from. All right, guys, you heard it from Miss Kylie. If you're looking for a healthy alternative or something just to fill you up and get you through the day, come to June and Juice in Berlin, Maryland. Looks like Maya had so much fun there. I know. Oh, and she just kept telling us and our photographers how good everything was. That soft serve off Sai. That's what they keep That's talking what they keep about. telling us. That it was just amazing, life changing. Every all of the above. Yeah. And it looked like it. Yes. They were like, <laughs> we would drive hours if we needed to to get that. Yeah, the only reason we sound a little bitter is because nobody brought anything back to share. I Not even the juices. They may have tried to, but I think they may have finished it on the way home. That can happen. We're forgiving. Because it's local, so we can just go, I guess, ourselves. We can go, all right. Yeah, we'll but yeah, out. such a burden no, to go get delicious food. But I think that might have to be a weekend plan. I think so, too. Okay, sounds good. So we will try our, our John and Juice. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, but coming up in our next block of Coast Life, last week, we sat down with our friend Rob Rector. He told us about such an incredible event coming up, Bat Fest, Leah. Yes, how far is that? Fest. Bat Fest. <laughs> She does it a lot better than I do, but next up we're going to hear from Rob about this incredible event, so stay tuned. Today on Coast Life, we are keeping you updated with some really cool, amazing events yes. in our area. So we have someone really cool and amazing on the Coast Life couch. <laughs> How you like that, Rob Rector? I like that intro. Thank you. <laughs> our local movie extraordinaire. We always love talking all things movie with you. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course. So I'm going to bring this up. You might recognize this symbol. The bat. Yeah, it <laughs> yes. It's good. The bat symbol. We're talking bat fest today. Rob, what is bat fest? So, Batfest is uh, part of an ongoing event that we have, an annual event that Revival House, uh, myself and filmmaker Rob Waters, we put together a little cinematic sandbox and we like to share with, uh, with our, our friends in the area. Uh, we've done this for the past, this will be our fifth, fourth year, okay. sorry. Fourth year, we started a few years ago with Jaws. Nice. Uh, then we did Jurassic Park. Very then last cool. year we did the OG Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And now we're with the iconic 1989 Tim Burton Batman. Nice. At Hudson Fields, we show it on a super huge inflatable outdoor screen. Uh, at Hudson Fields, we open the doors at six o'clock. It is free, nice. uh, no admission charge. We do accept donations at the door because sure. it is a fundraiser. Okay but we will have 
food trucks. We will have uh, artists. We'll have games for the kids. We'll do a costume contest Ooh. for those who want to get their <laughs> Harley Quinn on. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I live Batman music. Costume. Oh. I was Batman one year at the Sea Witch Festival, okay. and yes, I did walk around the it's whole time. Time to dust it off. Batman. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Interesting that you you <laughs> use that voice. So this film was responsible for that the Batman Bat voice. voice. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to kill you. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Batman. <laughs> Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton was a a very logical thinker, mm -hmm. and he said, "Look." I think people would just know it's Bruce Wayne if I use my voice. Oh. So he was the first one to say, what if I did a little bit deeper voice? Yeah. And decided to do that. And hence we have now the two bat voices that we always hear. I love Genius. that. <laughs> You're like the king of like facts that I, I didn't know I needed to know. I know. Yeah, things that on our occupy team. my brain that I can't remember new things because all this is clogging No, it's okay. Me. It works perfect for interviews like this. All right, so food, music, all of that good fun. Yeah. Do you, so do you, I know you mentioned it's free. Do you have to sign up ahead of time? You don't have to Great. sign up ahead of time. It's 6 o'clock. The doors mm -hmm. will open. Uh, you know, we, we invite all families to come. You can bring your blanket, bring a cooler, Great. come spread out there and walk around, listen to some music. Yeah. Revelation Brewery will is going to have a, a new uh, brew specifically mm -hmm. for this. Uh, and like I said, all proceeds will go to the BB Foundation. We've we've been able to raise over fifty thousand dollars the past few summers mm -hmm. doing this. Nice. So it's to help the superheroes that we have there. So it's wonderful to. Uh, to be able to give back, yeah. um, so the proceeds all go to them. But uh, then once once the dark night falls, nice, uh, got thank it. You, thank you. <laughs> uh, we will we will screen the the iconic uh, 1989 one of, my, in my estimation, the best Batman. So I was going to ask which one's his favorite. Which one's your favorite? Uh, well, That's fair. It, you know this one. A you've got Prince on the soundtrack. You've got the Danny Elfman score, which Ugh, is, yeah, uh, I mean, if, if I were to say, hey, can you tell me Christopher Nolan's score for The Dark Knight? No one would remember that. But you do remember the <laughs> Danny Elfman one. Uh, you know, it's got the, the Gotham City in there is still very Tim Burton-esque. So it's got this, like, German expressionist feel. Yeah. And it feels like a, a really weird city, whereas... Uh -huh. And I'm not knocking Christopher Nolan's. I do enjoy that, but it that felt more like a New York City yeah, or Chicago sure. or something like that. Mm -hmm. But this felt like an actual, you know, city unto itself. Mm -hmm. So where all these weird kooky villains come out of? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like like the iconic Jack Nicholson as mm -hmm. the Joker. Yep. Uh, and I'm not disparaging Heath Ledger, but this was this was a very, you know, it, it was. Probably one of the best Joker's mm -hmm. performances that that I remember seeing. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of iconography came from this, and it's it you know really kind of set the bar for for superhero films yeah. from that point forward. I mean, this was kind of the launching point for people to take it seriously yeah. True. and say, hey, you know, superhero movies can be a thing. Yes, yeah. that makes sense. And you picked some pretty iconic movies for all these fests. Star Wars, yeah. The Jaws, now Batman. How do you go through picking? Because now I'm already thinking, I'm like, what is he going to pick yeah. next year? So are we. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> we really do. I mean, honestly, the night of, Rob and I will kind of sit there and lean over to each other like, what are we going to do next year? So we try to kind of go through our... our you know, our mental uh, uh, banks and say, hey, what do we think that would be appealing to a yeah. large group mm -hmm. of people that people can take their kids to and True. still enjoy it and yeah. kind of relive their youth but still share it with their mm -hmm. with their kids as well too. So I, I have no idea if I could break it here first. I would, <laughs> but I don't know. But we'll... Uh, could I suggest... We'll take uh, suggestions. Maybe Back to the Future Fest? Oh, uh, we could do Back to the Future Fest. That sounds fest. good. I think that might be good. <laughs> maybe even do a trilogy and do it all nighter and just go yeah. throughout the night. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good, like suggestions. good suggestions. Good suggestions. All right, perfect. Hey, one more <laughs> yeah. time really quick. Just remind people when and where with Bat Fest. So, yes, it's going to be on August 26th. Mm -hmm. um, doors open at 6 o'clock. Uh, you know, like I said, you can you can bring blankets and chairs and so on and so forth but bring uh, bring a good attitude bring a costume if you mm -hmm. wish yeah. we will give out some prizes for both adults and for kids nice. so uh, yeah just be ready to have a good time in Gotham City and bring a donation and yes. bring a donation Sounds possibly great. yes we'll do. awesome Rob always great to have you thank you so much for telling us about that thank you for having me of course we have a lot more to tell you about so stick around 
Whether it's letting one of us drive around in an electric moke or checking out the latest Broncos that they have yeah. or just giving back to the community. You know our friends at Preston are always up to something. Yes. <laughs> and uh, again, whether it's a, a charitable act mm -hmm. um, the, with all their frogs that they have, so different much. colored frogs mm -hmm. for different months, they all give back to local charities. Yeah. We love that. But did you also know that they service vehicles as well? Yeah, didn't so. know that till recently. Right, so not only can you go to Preston Automotive, any one of their locations, mm -hmm. check out a new vehicle, something you might see yourself in driving around. Ooh. I always <laughs> find one of those when I'm at Preston, that's for always, sure. Always. always. So the first step to buying a new car, in my mind, is visualizing what you're going to look best in. Exactly. <laughs> but once you've purchased that vehicle that you're going to look your best in driving around town, mm -hmm. show stopping, hey. uh, you may need to service that vehicle. And again, our friends at Preston Automotive can take care of that. That's why your field correspondent, Maya Henry, is there to check out some of the services that they provide. You're watching Coast Life, and if you're anything like me, making appointments is extremely hard with a busy schedule. But Preston has something extremely cool for you guys to make it easy. So today I am with Junior Gregor. So Junior, tell me about this new service that you guys have. So Preston has a service now, what they call a Ford Mobile service. And what it does is the technician will come out to your work, to your uh, place of business, and service your car for you right there while you're at work or uh, wherever you shall be. All right, that's pretty cool. So how did this all get started? So Ford now has a program where they're going to give us a couple of vans and a couple of Ford Escapes so we can actually perform your Ford recalls for you uh, as well. Right. That's pretty cool. So how would someone know that they have a recall car? Do you guys know that? Do they know that? How's that go about? Yeah, the customer will get notified of that recall and then they can contact us um, and we can come out and handle that for you. All right, awesome. And what other kind of services do you guys provide? So they're going to provide a lube oil filter, lube oil filter. Um, possibly an air filter replacement if needed, rotate your tires, all your general light maintenance needs. Wow, that's extremely cool. Makes it easy. So how could go someone get in contact with you? So they can go to any of our websites. Um, they could call the 1-800 one, uh, number or 410-673-7171. And that's going to put you in contact with anybody. And if you have the Ford Pass on your phone, you can actually go on the Ford Pass and find a dealership. Hey, that's awesome. I love it. So can do you guys just go straight to the house? Do you go anywhere that they need you to be, like their job? Like, how does that go about? Oh, absolutely. We'll go anywhere that we're going to need to be, uh, where they want us to come and, and perform that service for you. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Junior. You guys also have someone here to kind of walk us through. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We have one of our technicians from Georgetown, Will, here. He's going to show you uh, exactly what he's going to do. All right, guys. So we're going to see it first from Will. So the first thing we want to do is, is start by checking all the fluids. Uh, we also want to inspect the lights, the wiper blades, the filters, uh, check the tires and the tire pressure um, and the brakes to just to get a general idea of what that vehicle may need either now or in the future so we can give an accurate report to our customer based on our multi-point inspection. So even though this program was designed by Ford Motor Company, we do service all makes and models. Thanks, Maya. And I think this is so funny because when we all learned that Preston <laughs> does so much servicing on cars, we all were like, oil change? I need an oil change. Do you need an oil change? Yes. Yeah, I need one too. Like, <laughs> we all got so excited. We are sending our cars to Preston. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We were drawing straws as to who's, because that actually, that was all done in our parking lot downstairs. Yes. We were like, all right, whose car is going to get serviced? <laughs> yes, exactly. So now we know all of ours can by yes. heading to Preston. So good, good news. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. Speaking of good news. Yeah. You know, yesterday we sat down and we talked with Ryan Ennis mm -hmm. about Random Acts of Kindness Day. Oh, love him. Love that interview. So fun. So we are going to mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that on the way, yes. but uh, we've got some more Coast Life mm -hmm. coming your way, so go anyway. This segment of Coast Life was brought to you by Preston Automotive. All right, so people who live on the Delmarva Coast, Leah, maybe you guys get this, right? We live near the beach. Yep. Do you get a lot of people who are like, hey! I'm trying to find somewhere to stay. You do get some visitors <laughs> when you live along Delmarva's coast because it's so beautiful and there's it so is. much to do. Right, right. I, I always, every <laughs> summer, I get the text. I haven't talked to you since high school, but I'm looking for somewhere in Rehoboth Beach. Do you know anywhere? Yeah. Yep. Yes, yep. I do. So we're talking house guests today because we want to get your take on a couple of things. I have some very welcome guests yes. coming to stay with me tomorrow, one of my best friends and her fiancé, so very excited about that. Uh, but this got us talking about... Do you ever say, make yourself at home? And they do. <laughs> they do. 
Yeah. I'm trying to think back if I've ever had like a truly bad house guest. Yeah. And I think I've been lucky enough that like I really haven't, but I definitely say make yourself at home uh -huh. all the time. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a guest that maybe gets a little too at home? Oh yeah. So in college more specifically, this mm -hmm. would happen a lot. I think maybe because it's college and so you're feeling a little more just fun all the, all the time. <laughs> but um, I did have a friend of mine who I, I would say, you know, oh, come over anytime. Make yourself at home. And I would come home and they would be at my kitchen table eating my food mm -hmm. and the, napping in my bed. Uh. Uh, so I had a different roommate, not that same year, who I would come home often and people were sleeping in my bed because she would tell her visitors, make yourself at home in the dorm room. Now, like, that's weird to invite somebody into somebody else's bed. And, like, I used to house sit, babysit, mm -hmm. dog sit a lot. And anytime I was house sitting, they'd be like, have my room, mm -hmm. do this. And, like, I always thought, like, that's a little weird. I don't want to sleep in a bed that's owned by like, right. somebody else. It just, for me, it's like, Ugh. And I feel like when somebody says, make yourself at home, personally, I'm like, don't do any of that. You are a guest in this space. You leave it cleaner than you found it. That's yes. the Girl Scout law. That is the law. <laughs> you know, our producer on Coast TV was staying with me recently. We're going to give her a round of applause. Seriously. Because, just because, wow. So World's greatest house guest. <laughs> you would, it's unbelievable. I, I'm not making any of this up, right? So she stays with me and she, I'm, I'm, I say, make yourself at home. And she's like, I'm going to pay you back for letting me stay here. Every day, Leah, I had dinner cooked for me. I know. When I woke up early, there was a packed lunch for me in the fridge. The inside of my microwave was scrubbed. She did organize my Tupperware cabinet. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of people have really clean, organized that Tupperware cabinets? That is an cabinets? angel. Uh, no, she's just she is okay, a good. top tier house guest. It was unreal. So take notes from our producer, definitely. But making yourself truly at home, how do you feel about it? We want to hear from you. I just, yeah, I don't think I could do it. Mm -mm. I mean, I guess maybe if you're like a prolonged house guest mm -hmm. and you end up living there for a while, right. like maybe you start off really strong, right. but then as you get comfortable, you're kind of like, oh, well, it's all right if my shoes are there for a little while. Like, I'll get to it. Yes. A little word of advice, too. Tell me if you agree with this or not. Um, a lot of you guys are going back to school this week. You're going back to college. If, <laughs> if you <laughs> are in a dorm room, that is your home, but also maybe don't make yourself completely at home. Home. Yeah, still if not you your be, home home. Right. If you're trying to be a good roommate, be careful. It's still a shared space. Yes. I know you guys have <laughs> terrible roommate stories. Yes. Funny we got ones. into them. <laughs> yes. House guests. A lot of you guys own Airbnbs and vacation homes here. So if you have like a really funny make yourself a home story where they went too far, yes. please send them to us. Team at coastlife.com. Maybe we'll read them because we could all use a good laugh. Yeah. And if they did go too far, don't forget, we've always got all kinds of local mm -hmm. businesses like our friends at Stanley Steamer that can take care of a dirty carpet. Boom, Leah. Yes. All I'm saying. Great <laughs> point. Because we destroyed that man's carpet and it came out looking. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, like I said, let us know. Again, team at coastlife.com. But also, did you forget, we're on social media everywhere. So you can follow us here and talk to us all the time. We have a little bit more Coast Life coming your way. A lot of fun to be had. We'll be right back. Leah, did you do something kind for someone today? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Trick question. You always are kind. Did you do something kind? I hope you mm -hmm. did. You still have time if you didn't. Just a friendly yes. reminder. It is random acts of kindness day yes in delaware i've done some doodling for my friends i don't know if that Perfect. counts you know of course that counts designing things in mind with with a specific friend yes and they're beautiful sketches i've seen them Thank yeah you. that's very kind <laughs> of course so uh, maryland virginia what are you doing today yeah are you being kind yeah. probably not just kidding. We love our friends in Maryland. I'm a Marylander. Don't forget before you get all upset. Okay. It's okay. We can all learn from Delaware and do some random acts of kindness. Yes. But we talked about a lot of stuff today. I know we had talked a little bit about the Taylor Swift impersonator mm -hmm. on TikTok who she's getting some heat for yeah. not being honest about that's kind of what she's doing. Yeah. It's a little strange. So just uh, tone it back. And then we also talked about the egg prank that you may see a lot. <laughs> on TikTok, where it's the, the parents that have been cracking an egg on their kids' heads. If you do it to your significant <laughs> other who's like over 18, let us know. Send us a video. I, I Please, I actually, I want to see this so bad. These yeah. are the funniest videos out right now. Sometimes those are so cringy, though. You know, like when it's a couple's prank video mm -hmm. and like the setup, they're like, oh, they're going to think this is so funny. And then like it's so cringy because yeah. it doesn't go that way. Like the other person gets so mad and you're like... And I shouldn't be watching this. Like, yeah. this is a private moment. <laughs> right. You're like, like, don't, like, why'd you post it? Right? Yeah. Well, I also think sometimes that's part of the prank. Maybe. But, like, I also don't 
find those funny and no. maybe that's just me. Just just laugh. It's egg. Yeah. Unless I like you're the allergic, harmless you're pranks. fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, send us videos. It's yes. so good. Yes. They're amazing. And we always like hearing from you, whether mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, chiming in on our socials about things that we're talking about, whether it's you sending us jokes for our joke jar. Mm -hmm. We love those too. Yes. You can always get in touch with us, team at coastlife.com. And uh, maybe explain the joke if you send it. <laughs> if it has like a difficult punchline, because there's some that we've gotten that we're like, I bet the punchline is funny. We just don't. Sometimes we're not the fastest no, we when it comes to it. processing jokes. It's not you, us. <laughs> so, but don't forget, you can do that 